Hello everyone, and welcome back to Planet Rust. After the small uprising our hunter caused in the slave pens, it is now time to find a place to reside. Food is also dastardly important. In order to survive, his new clan must hunt, forage, and kill. They must survive off the land. Using his keen sense of smell, the hunter soon sources out a young stag ripe for the plucking. Let's see how his newfound friends handle a bow, shall we? Patience. Carefully. Carefully. Crikey. They made short work of that deer. The hunter's impressed. Food, it seems, shall not be too much of a problem for Albion. However, finding an ideal spot to live might very well be. They need to work carefully, building just far enough away from Cross Clan that they can be safe, and yet near enough that they can cause some havoc. As Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small, in settling for a life that is less than the one you are capable of living. After his newfound pack of friends mercilessly put down that horse, the hunter leads them through the river. This thicket might provide an ideal situation for them. Hidden away in the bushes, there'll be plenty of animals, resources, and cover for Albion to thrive. New swim animations, nice. Having found a seemingly ideal spot, the hunter indicates that they should start gathering and they are very much happy to oblige. However, as any tactician worth his salt would tell you, learning the lay of the land is of vital importance. The hunter will momentarily leave his friends to scout out the land. The smell of fresh air graces his nostrils. The wind blows through his hair. Our hunter is free and feeling empowered and strong. This could very well be Saltwater Hunter. Better safe than sorry. Again, struggling on those rocks. Interesting. Approaching the cave in a wearing fashion, our hunter's been very nervous of them ever since the experiment. Movement in the bushes. What could it be? A deer, perhaps? Oh! That's no deer. Looks like he's planning to ambush the hunter. How foolish. Much like the Chinook tribe, our hunter waits in ambush and... Wait a minute. Is that a box? What on earth is a box doing down here in this cave? By George. He's found one of the guns secreted away in the island. What an advantage he has. Christ, it's him. The hunter faces him like a man. A spear in the gullet sends him running. Interesting. Let's try out the hunter's new toy. Fucking nice. He had assumed the Cross Clan had found all the guns that there were. However, look at this. A silenced pistol. No doubt it will come in handy. Returning to Albion. Our hunter can see that work has very much been done. Don't forget the pumpkin. The illuminated rocks effortlessly convey the flag of Albion, and it appears work is still very much in process. Much like a military camp or bivouac erected in the Austrian War of Succession in 1741, Albion is taking remarkable shape very quickly. Fantastic. Ooh, very nice jacket that bloke is wearing. I feel a uniform might be coming on. Our hunter surveys the work of his people in delight. This will be a mighty, mighty formation indeed. Yet, there is still scouting to be done. Our hunter has seen but a small glimpse of this huge map. Regardless, he might get lucky and find some more weapons for his people. Seems he wants to come along. 
a brutal fighter in the rebellion. Yes, thinks the hunter. Let's call him Wolf. Stone spears at the ready. They make their leave. Some traveling later, the hunter and wolf have stumbled upon a skyscrapingly large outpost. Approaching with much caution, the two make their way to investigate. Maybe don't get stuck on these rocks, hunter. Very pro. He is reminded of the small encampments upon that mountain, but on a much larger scale. Slowly and carefully, they Bloody hell, let's run. They've been spotted, and one of the chaps up in those towers has a bolt action. A barrage of arrows and bullets fly down towards the hunter and wolf. Desperately attempting to avoid the hailstorm that beseeches them, the two duck and dart left to right, much like a fleeing herbivore. But do they flee? God no, straight into the heart. The sign over one of the half-built towers. The hunter knows who these chaps are. The Watch. A clan full of cowards and cravens. The Watch stick to their high towers, attacking all those who pass nearby. Roof campers, by trade. They will rue the day they fucked with Albion. Wolf is injured. Who knows how many bandages he has left? How are they going to get in? The door is locked. Fantastic. After mercilessly executing one of them, the hunter makes his way up the stairs, leaving Wolf to collect the body. Slowly now, one step at a time, they'll be ambushing. They picked the wrong guy to ambush. Poking his head over the rise, the hunter sees more of them. One for one. Too bad that chap didn't get a headshot. Working like a well-oiled machine, the hunter and wolf carve their way through the heart of the watch. Roof campers, lethal, when 200 yards away from atop their pretty little tower. But as soon as you bring the fight to them, you see what they're really made of. Sticks and stones. Nothing. The hunter and wolf will not leave without that bolt action. It could prove invaluable for Albion's defense. Still bearing a hailstorm of arrows, they fling the door open and try and deal with the other target. It appears there are targets from all sorts of angles. However, lucky for the pair, they're about as sharp as a bowling ball. Come on, hunter, seal the deal. Very nice. But he's still standing, and there are more of them on top. Wolf killed him. Nice. Such overwhelming odds would turn away any other two. But not the hunter and wolf. They will persist, and they will win. However, the door is locked. How on earth are we going to get through here? Crikey. Wolf had the key. Must have taken it off one of the dead bodies. Luck it seems, is favoring Albion this day. Who knows how many there are? Expertly, the hunter hits a fly out of the air and pins him against the wall. Bloody annoyance. Yes, very nice, very nice, good shot. Reeling from the miss, he'll make up for it. Very nice, finish him. Oh yes. In close quarters, it seems they have the advantage. Oh shit! Having taken a hit, the hunter is blood drunk. He will push through the hordes, using his pistol to the advantage. The bolt action! Headshot. That'll sting. Slowly and carefully, he moves up. Crossbow right through the knee. Sorry chum, not today. With the bolt action secured, and the watch clan crippled, our hunter smiles to himself. Well done. Leaving the tatters of this outpost behind, the hunter is very impressed with Wolf's diligence to Albion. A good fighter, 
and brave. With their newfound loot and resources, the pair head back to Albion. Remember, strong people don't put others down. They lift them up and slam them on the ground for maximum damage. The watch took a loss today, and the hunter rides on the wings of victory. Nearly home. Gunshots. What on earth? Desperately, the two summit the hill to see the remains of Albion smoldering and burning to a crisp. What the hell happened in their absence? It must be Cross Clan, desperate for revenge, those petty pricks. The hunter can't see anyone. Where are the other Albionians? Cross Clan, he knew it, and they're burning him alive. Quickly, he indicates to Wolf, give me the bolt action. Grabbing it in one hand, he charges to take position. He likes getting his feet toasty. The hunter tries to save them. Dropping a member of Cross Clan mercilessly, he lines up his next shot. They run into the darkness like cowards. Fighting the urge to follow them, our hunter must scout Albion and see if there's anyone who can be saved. It appears not. All their hard work burnt into the ground. The hunter will not stand for this. Landmines. A plan begins to form. As dawn breaks, the thick black smoke from the smoldering remains of Albion rises into the night's air. Cross Clan will pay for this. The numerous bodies that lit the floor will be avenged. The plan is a dastardly one. The hunter idolizes the tacticians behind the Trojan horse. He will build his own, and while he's doing so, give Wolf an opportunity to sneak into one of their outposts, freeing the slaves. Bingo. They've stumbled upon one of Cross Clan's smaller outposts, located relatively close to the former Albion. Interesting. Bet these were the bastards that took it down. At the coming of nightfall, the hunter and wolf will sneak down in front of the outpost and build their trap house. A lot has to go to plan for this to work out. It's time. Under the Shroud of Darkness, the Hunter and Wolf begin to assemble their crude construction. A nice chest inside full of resources, that should keep them busy. Using the landmines stolen from one of their corpses, the Hunter begins to set the place to blow. Now, he's not foolish. He doesn't expect Cross Clan just to stumble across a mine. He's got a far more intricate plan at work. The anti-personnel landmine has been employed in countless wars over countless generations. This will be just one of those times. After placing some spikes and a sign to draw their attention, our hunter runs to his point and waits for dawn. Appears they've spotted it. I wonder if they will take the bait. There's the bone armor captain, but will he lead them to their demise? Wolf is in position, perilously scaling the tower. It'll be the perfect diversion. Armed with the pistol, the hunter will hear his shots and know for sure that he's inside their base. Very carefully, Cross Clan leave their outpost. Appears they've spotted the mines and don't want some freshborn running up and fucking up their day. Little do they know that their true nemesis is perched upon a rather high outcrop of rock and will be delivering fiery death with the round of a bolt action. 
Looks like they're leaving one of them outside. Interesting. Oh no, a miss. They'll surely have heard that. Fantastic. Fireworks. The hunter considers letting this chap run for the gate and opening it to help Wolf. The shot is a poor one, glancing off his bone armor. The hunter needs to aim more precisely. Wolf's gunfire. He's putting one of them down as we speak. Fantastic. The plan is going well. However, this one little chap needs to be executed. As he climbs the ladder, the hunter delivers another shot. That'll have him bleeding. Dead man's click. Crikey. He reloads quickly. The guy cannot attack Wolf. Oh. Doesn't seem like too much of a problem there then, does it? How does that ground taste, my friend? I hope you bleed out mighty slowly. Desperately, the hunter searches for any sign of Wolf. He's worried. Could one of Cross Clan have taken him by surprise, came at him from behind and killed him? The hunter's panicking. Where is he? Thank God, Wolf lives. But where are the slaves? Might Wolf have led them through a back exit? Who knows? Still, the hunter searches desperately. Still no sign. He's getting nervous. Where could they have gone? Wait a minute. The gate. Fantastic. Wolf's done it well. After laying that keen ambush, that outpost will surely be screaming with pain. The hunter leads his new friends, the former slaves, back to Albion. After a long, arduous day, the new Albionians settle in the ruins of what was once a thriving community. The hunter vows that Cross Clan will never deliver such a vicious attack again. Not while he still lives. They will rebuild. It will be mightier than it ever was before. After a brief spell of hunting, it appears everyone will be well fed tonight. Deservedly, no doubt. I am fondly reminded of the fall of Rome. I recall cowering in the ruins, small fires, cooking fresh meat. We had big ideas, big dreams, but none of which will compare to Albion. What did the Romans ever do for us, anyway? Regularly scheduled hunting trips take part during the night when it's safer. The hunter will only leave a few men behind to guard Albion at all times. He searches the darkness for the two that went off to hunt. Can't spot them. Good. They've learnt well. Ah, Wolf. The hunter's right-hand man. Likes burning himself in fires, too. Clutching a machete, the hunter relishes this man's attention to a fight. Cooking human meat. Not quite to the hunter's taste. But I know my head's up.